This talk is a quick tutorial on the study three window bedside ultrasound versus chest x-ray for confirmation of endotracheal tube placement. The clinical question of the study is to determine whether a three window bedside ultrasound may be used in order to determine the accuracy of endotracheal tube placement as an alternative to chest film. Our hypothesis is that three window bedside ultrasound will be as effective in determining the accuracy of endotracheal tube placement, and that we will be able to make this determination faster and more safely compared with chest x-ray. The benefits of this study include decreased ionizing radiation cost and time, the background to this study question comes from the fact that the majority of the prior studies on this topic have been performed in other settings that aren't relevant to the intensive care unit or to critically ill patients in the emergency room. To date, there have not been any studies in these settings, and that is why we are seeking to answer this question. We will have 140 patients enrolled between the emergency department and the intensive care unit. We will scan several windows, including trachea, lungs, and bilateral diaphragms. This will be performed by a physician who is trained in point-of-care ultrasound and will occur within 60 minutes of intubation. We will seek to determine the position of the endotracheal tube by ultrasound film and compare this to the end result of the chest film when formally read. The sonographer will perform the ultrasounds prior to the, their visualization of the chest x-ray result and they will note on the final screen of their ultrasound whether they believe the tube to be in one of the positions below, which could include in the trachea, in the esophagus, not visualized, right main stem, or left main stem. The first objective of this study is to compare the sonographer's ability to predict the placement of the tube using the ultrasound. The second objective will be to compare the amount of time it takes to achieve this impression with ultrasound versus the amount of time it takes to get the interpretation of the final chest x-ray. Some important additional details. We will not be obtaining consent for this procedure because the patients are mechanically ventilated and sedated, so we have re received a waiver of consent since this is a very low-risk study. We will also have all participants receive standard of care, which will include the usual repositioning of the endotracheal tube when clinically appropriate, um, the obtaining of a chest x-ray, and the appropriate ventilator settings. We will not make any clinical decisions, and this is very important. No patient care decisions should be made based on the findings on the ultrasound. So if you believe the endotracheal tube to be in the wrong position, we are going to ignore that during the clinical care of the patient and instead go with what we would normally do, which would be physical examination, auscultation, and evaluation of the chest x-ray. Again, no patient care decisions regarding the tube placement will be made based on the findings of the ultrasound. At the beginning, uh, once a patient has been identified as an appropriate uh, candidate for the study, there are several inclusion and exclusion criteria, which the research associates will be familiar with and include age over 18 and not pregnant, each patient will have a unique patient identifier created. And this will be on the first page, the first screen of the Sonocyte um, study. We will either enter ICU ETT patient X or ED ETT patient X. The X is the date and time, with the month being two digits, day two digits, and time in four digits. Here is an example. October 9th at 8.20 a.m. would be 10.09.08.20. After placing the unique identifier, we will also record the medical record number on this first screen of the Sonocyte film. Ultimately, this will be del deleted once these images have been evaluated and compared to chest x-ray in order to maintain patient confidentiality. You'll also need to put the initials of the sonographer in the bottom box that says user. Please use three initials. Usually a research associate will be present to collect the data in real time. However, if an endotracheal intubation happens after hours or when one is not on shift, there will be some information 
the sonographer will need to fill out on the data sheet that only the physician can fill out. Um, we will talk more about this in a later screen. The windows we will be achieving are three. One is the trachea in a cross section with using the linear high frequency probe. The second is the bilateral lungs at the second intercostal space with the linear probe as well. And then lastly, we'll switch to the low frequency probe, the P21 probe, and look at bilateral diaphragm between seventh and ninth intercostal space. There are several keys uh, to achieving success in this study. We need to be sure to fill out the initial screen, create the unique patient identifier, medical record number, and user. When we get each view, we need to take a clip of each view. It can be a small clip, a short clip, that's fine, but it needs to be an actual live view. And when we do bilateral views, for instance, right lung sliding, left lung sliding, um, diaphragm, spleen, please label the, those views with right or left. Although usually we'll be able to tell diaphragm and spleen apart, sometimes it's not as easy. And we also want on the final screen for you to record your impression on the last screen before you end the exam. Some more details. What are we looking for? In the tracheal view with um, indicator towards the patient's right, angled down towards the thorax, we will look at the trachea in the transverse fashion. And what will we be seeing? What we typically see in the trachea is air um, when, when there's no endotracheal tube there. There's just air shadow. Trachea looks a little bit hyperechoic with the cartilage. When there's an endotracheal tube in place, there's usually a very bright white line anteriorly, which represents the uh, line of the endotracheal tube, and some hyperechoic comet tails coming down. Here's another example of no endotracheal tube and a tracheal tube. See the bright white with the hyperechoic comet tail coming down. Some other examples, you can get a longitudinal view of the endotracheal tube. It is an optional view. This is not required for the study. The positioning would be such as this. I mean, you have to be exactly on the midline and find the white line of the endotracheal tube. Here's another example of a cross-sectional view. You see the bright white line of the endotracheal tube and some hyperechogenicity behind. Here's a real live view. This is the bright white line that we're looking at, you can see coming in and out of the screen, hyperechoic comet tail line coming down. This, in case you can't see, is the endotracheal tube, the anterior wall is bright white, and this is approximately the level of the thyroid. Some more examples. You should not if you, are, if you happen to be looking in the longitudinal view, you should not see the end of the white stripe. It should go all the way off the screen. If you see the end, then the tip is very high. You should also not see the balloon above the sternum. If you do, the tube is also too high. You can see this bright white larger circle representing the balloon. You can also often blot the balloon. Um, you can also feel it right there, right above the sternum. So if you do feel that and see that, then perhaps it's too high. And we also, of course, should not see the endotracheal tube in the esophagus. Once we get the tracheal view, which should only take a few seconds, take a clip of that um, and move on to the lung views, get mid, um, mid clavicular, second or third intercostal space. And what we're looking for is a clip labeled with R or L to show lung sliding. To remind you what lung sliding looks like. What we have here is a visceral parietal pleural interface and it was sliding. And what you see is ants moving along that line. So if you're not sure that you saw sliding, which usually it's very visible as a shimmering at the pleural interface or what appears to be ants marching, um, you can put an M mode line down through the pleura and see if you can see the sky ocean beach, which you typically see if there's normal sliding 
Often if there's abnormal sliding or a pneumothorax, you will not see that um, gran granular appearance of the beach. But again, this is an optional view. You do not have to get that view. When you move on to the, the low frequency probe and look for the di diaphragmatic views, the position is going to be over the lower rib cage between the seventh and ninth intercostal spaces. On the spleen side, you're a little bit posterior axillary line. On the liver side, usually the mid axillary line with the indicator towards the head. We want to obtain this view at both sides. And what we're looking for here, here's the spleen side where you can clearly see that with respirations, the spleen is moving down towards the feet. In this case, we also have a pleural effusion. If you happen to note that the diaphragm is not moving or it's very minimally moving, it might make you uh, suspect that the tube is in the contralateral bronchus. This is a liver view, liver at Morrison's pouch. Here with breathing, you can see that the liver is moving down with the diaphragm. Remember that the dot is towards the head, so the liver is moving towards the uh, feet with each respiration, which we expect to see unless the ET tube is inserted in the contralateral bronchus, which almost never happens really on this side. After you've gotten the tracheal view, the bilateral lung sliding, and the spleen and liver view, all you need to do on the final screen of the scan is type your impression. Uh, you can hit text, and this key allows you to use the, the keyboard to type, and you can simply put in trachea, esophagus, um, not visualized, right main stem, or left main stem. And then be sure to end the exam and alert the research team that you have completed the, the ultrasound. If you happen to to do it in the absence of a research associate standing there, you definitely need to know, let them know that this exam exists so that they can complete the data tool. You will also need to note for the research associate what time you looked at the chest x-ray afterwards. We will know what time the chest x-ray was taken by the timestamp on the film, but we also need to know what time uh, the sonographer actually visualized the chest x-ray. Here's the data tool tool, you can see that there's um, a dark and a light, whether it's if it's printed in black and white or if it's printed in color, there's a blue and a pink. The blue areas are the areas that need physician input. We, we must get that information from the person who did the scan, so please be available or fill this part out yourself. Alert the research associates so that they can provide you a data sheet to fill out this part. We really want to thank you for participating in this study. We don't think these uh, scans should take more than five minutes of your time. But it's very critical that we fill out the, the identification screen and the impression screen, as well as get the views of the trachea, bilateral lungs, bilateral um, diaphragms, um, and be sure to help the research associates fill out the data tool. Thanks very much to everybody involved, and have fun.